In this video, I'm going to take you through my first experience snowboarding in the backcountry at Teton Pass in Wyoming. I'll share some of the safety equipment I brought on the hike, how to use a split board, and share some insights from my first experience. So let's dive in. After snowboarding the past several years at Jackson Hole Mountain Resort and Grand Tarkey Resort in Alta, Wyoming, I decided I wanted to try something different. The only way to escape the groomed runs and crowds of people that the big resorts attract was adventuring into the backcountry. Since Jackson, Wyoming and surrounding areas had received some historic snowfalls in the 2022-2023 season, I thought this was the best chance for finding perfect conditions. Since I had no idea where to start or even what equipment I needed. I decided a guide would be the best option. After researching a few places around Driggs, Idaho and Jackson, Wyoming, I decided to go with a company called Yostmark, based out of Driggs, Idaho. So I wanted to show what they are giving me to take with me. So this is my split board and my backpack that they gave me, which will give me the beacon in case of an avalanche. So I'll get some more stuff in here. Swing of the shovel. That's one part of the shovel. Here's the end of the shovel. We have a pro. As my guide was showing me the ins and outs of my gear, these questions started popping into my head. Would I be able to keep up with my guide? Am I going to get hurt? Can I snowboard in this powder? Am I fit enough to hike up all these mountains? It's human nature to have this anxiety about doing something for the first time. I was so nervous of how strenuous climbing up a mountain on two skis with all sorts of gear on your back was going to be. But after about 30 minutes into the first climb, my nerves eased. It was very slow going with numerous breaks throughout. And with the beautiful scenery of the snow covered mountains, I had come to the conclusion that my decision to venture into the back country was vindicated. There you go. Nick. There's one on top, one on the bottom. Yep. And then you're in. Sweet dude. Now you're ready to rock. Yeah. For bigger drops, I totally collapse mine. Okay. This is about a 400 foot vert is all we're dropping right here. It yeah, took I'm about an hour to hike up to our first run and then about 15 minutes to make the transition of converting our two skis into a snowboard. Now it was time for our first run and the nervousness set in. I had no idea what to expect oh, on our first run. I didn't even know if this was going to be something that came easy to me or if I had made a huge mistake and wasted my guide's time. Oh no. I'm coming. The first run was a huge success, minus me getting stuck for a minute. It didn't take me too long to figure out how to maneuver because riding in deep powder requires a little bit of a different technique compared to groom slopes. You need to really shift your weight and body differently to stay upright. It's almost as if you have a sense of weightlessness because the powder offers minimal resistance. Dude, that's gnarly. Dude, that's, that's gnarly. Oh, it's so deep. This is epic. This is not normal. Uh, <laughs> it's a good day. Uh, oh. I'll see you there, just like All right. After our first successful run, it was time to make the transition of converting our snowboard into two skis. The binding slide off, then the board splits into two skis after you undo the latches. Then it's time to install the skins. The skins are held onto the bottom of the skis with glue, and the other side is actually like a very fine carpet that lets the skis grip into the snow so you will not slide around when climbing up steep grades. The bindings will then slide on to make like a cross-country ski. On our second climb of the day, the sun came out and it made for a beautiful day. This climb was about a mile and a quarter in length and took little over an hour. Since it was lunchtime, we decided to grab a bite to eat and take it in the scenery before our biggest run of the day. Cool, huh? Yeah. Wanna go here? I think so. If you throw your skis in the sun, like if they're facing face to the sun. This is a freaking workout. 
Our third climb was a little shorter, only about 30 minutes long and a half a mile in length. Due to the time crunch we had, we only hiked halfway up. As you can tell, the snow was still fantastic. Dude. Yeah. Dude, that's awesome. Oh man, I forgot to put my goggles on. <laughs> oh no. I wonder if I can scoot down. I don't think so. So is that where you take most people for their first run? Yeah. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. We had to hike a short distance to get to a point where there was enough slope so we could make our way back to the beginning of the trailhead. Nice work, <laughs> dude. Thanks. If you're thinking about if backcountry is right for you, just go for it. It was totally worth it, and I will be back. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and hit that notification bell to join us on our next adventure. Until then, keep exploring, and we'll see you in the next video. You just go? I'll just wear my hand guns, gear out of bounds, you know? But like, over the years, I'm like, yeah,